Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my backyard on this cold, drizzly, kind of sleety Minnesota day. I picked the best days to make videos. <laughs> so about uh, 18 months ago, I came up with and made these lumber stack leveling bases here out of some C-channel and some square tube. And these have worked out extremely well back here for stacking slabs and lumber. It makes setting up a really flat foundation for your lumber super quick, super easy, super painless, and I really like that. I had to stack another log out here uh, about a week ago, and I had, uh, luckily I had two of these things left over, which made the process a little bit easier, but I still have to kind of manually shim and get three other blocks into the same plane as the other two. And that process was kind of not fun, and it reminded me that I do to make more of these things because I love them, for one, and for two, I have some more stacking to do, and I just want to have some kind of laying around in case I do need some more at any point. So in the shop today, I'm putting finish on these panels, which will be for the doors, the sideboard I'm building. So as I'm applying finish to those, I don't want to be creating a whole lot of dust, so I don't want to do any wood projects today. So it's a perfect day to do some fabrication. <laughs> so I went out to the steel yard, and I picked up some more steel to make a bunch more of these things. Here's all of the steel I'll be starting with. I have six of each piece, so that should produce a good amount of levelers. I also pulled out the offcuts from the last time I made levelers, so that should produce another five little two-footers and then a single one-footer right there. I still need to cut down my original offcuts to the 24 inch length for the smaller levelers and I still need to cut all of these square tube for the 24 inch length and I still need to knock off all the corners on all of the base pieces but I want to take a break at this point to transfer the hole locations onto this first kind of round of square tube so I can start drilling those holes while the saw is cutting all of the rest of the pieces. So you saw me using these pieces to set the cut lengths on the saw and I can use these as well as a story stick to set the hole locations for all of the holes. Now it's going to be really easy on my unpainted four foot one because I still have the scribe lines on there. The scribe line on the 30 inch one is covered with paint so it's going to be a little more eyeballing to get the center of that hole. But these don't need to be super precise anyway. There is some tolerance between the hole size I'm using here and the stud that will go up into this hole. And that's about 3 16ths of an inch. The stud is 3 quarter and the hole is 15 16 Alright. Well, guess I'll go find a new belt. So I've actually been meaning to replace this V-belt for a long time. When I was building my bandsaw mill, this thing stalled so many times that I had actually worn a flat in the belt. So that's why I was making that knocking sound all the time. That's the flat going around the pulleys. But with that new belt in there, this thing should be a little bit quieter. And I'm guessing it's going to have better power transmission. So I should be able to drill the rest of these holes a lot faster. So with the drill press fixed, now I can continue on and get the holes drilled for the two-foot levelers. So this is, I guess, day two. So yesterday I was able to get 
all of the pieces cut to length and I got most of the holes drilled here except for the two foot levelers. Uh, it was really nice having the saw in the shop because as it was cutting all the stuff, I was able to just be drilling holes. So it was just really efficient and it just felt more productive than usual. So all of the base pieces have the corners nicely clipped for a really cool look. And now I can lay out the holes for the two foot levelers and get those holes drilled. The layout's gonna be the same on those as everything else. I'm just gonna use two uh, leveling bolts on these so there'll be a little bit of a wider span than the other ones, but should still be totally fine. So these are laid out three inches in from the end so I can mark those out, transfer the locations to all the pieces and get those holes drilled. <laughs> so all the holes are drilled. So before I start moving all the stuff outside to start welding and prepping and everything. I'm gonna go around and just kind of clean things up and then uh, get the stuff out of here. So the nice thing about this annular cutter is it does make some pretty small little shavings. So it makes clean up really easy. I can just vacuum everything up with a chop vac, no different than if this was wood chips. I've also stopped using oil when drilling mild steel because it just makes cleanup so much easier. The chips and things don't stick to whatever they're sitting on. They don't clump together. Of course, people might argue that it does reduce the life of the cutting tool. And on a twist drill, that's not something I particularly care about because I can really easily sharpen those. Uh, something like this, it honestly doesn't seem to make much of a difference with those carbide teeth on there. It doesn't really need it for mild steel. So similar thing here on the saw to clean it up. I can vacuum out the saw, the chip tray and everything. And I also can dump out my drop bin. I think I'll pull out some of these bigger pieces. These might come in handy for something someday but everything else I'll just throw in the recycling. Who the put a log on my welding table? Ah, damn, woodworkers. I guess I gotta move this log now, piece by piece. So that was my poor attempt at humorously trying to tie the stories of my videos together. <laughs> so if you want to see me slide up that log, I'll leave you a link to that. So the next thing we'll be doing is adding the studs, which are going to support the little top piece and allow that top piece to be adjusted to whatever angle it needs to be at. The bolt gets welded down into the C-channel and the last time I did this, I just did this by feel to get it so that the bolt wasn't contacting the hole just so you don't have any kind of alignment issues. Well, a couple people gave me a really good suggestion and after they told me it, I was like, that is very smart and I can't believe I didn't think about it. Uh, a little sleeve. So the, uh, the bolts can get sleeved like this and then the little sleeve has a little bit of space in there. So there really isn't any issue with the alignment and takes a little bit of the thought out of it. So while I was at the steel yard, I picked up a piece of Dom tube. So it has no seam on the inside and I wasn't able to find something that was exactly right but this piece of 7 8 by, I think, 18 gauge wall slides over the 3 quarter bolt with a little bit of play. And it also slides into the 15 16 hole with a bit of play as well. But really, as long as this works to keep the stud away from the wall of the hole, that's going to work out just absolutely perfectly. I'll be welding these studs into place with the 210 MP provided by my channel sponsor, Lincoln Electric. Now this machine does MIG and TIG, but I've only used it for stick because I just happen to enjoy the stick process. And at least compared to my old stick welder, this is a much more pleasant experience. It's really easy to just dial in the exact material and electrode you're using, and the machine will recommend an amperage that you can also fine tune and adjust. It does make setting up pretty easily, especially if you don't really know what amperage to use for the material you're welding or for the electrodes that you're using. So just like when I built these last time, I'll start off by tacking the studs in place with the top bar piece in place. That top bar will set the stud spacing correct, so I don't have to worry about that at all. And once I get them all tacked in place, I can pop the bars off and weld them all the way around. And it's gonna be pretty nice to get some heat out here because uh, it's freezing, it's below freezing today. It's literally freezing. So a little bit of heat from the weld will uh, be quite pleasant right about now. And actually my parents are on their way here right now for Thanksgiving, so maybe I can convince my dad to give me a hand out here when he gets here, doing a little bit of the prep work after I finish welding all these things. 
So as I'm welding, he can be grinding and cleaning up the welds and all of that stuff. So hopefully some of these will be ready for paint today since I'm planning to have my dad help me with some slapping and some stacking over the long weekend here. <laughs> so while my dad was here with Thanksgiving, we got about 10 or so of these things through the entire finishing process because we needed those ones for some stacking that I was planning on having us do. So those ones are already complete. So the overall batch has been decreased a little bit. So this is like a two batch batch, I guess. <laughs> so I just finished cleaning these ones up. I got the welds all cleaned up and I used the grinder to round over any sharp corners and deburr any cuts or anything like that. And the only thing I have left to do on these guys is to deburr all the interior cuts. So I'll knock off any of the remaining burrs on the inside with a deburring tool. And then these guys are ready for paint prep. So welcome to my laundry room. <laughs> I definitely prefer to do this outside, but it is uh, currently 17 degrees out and it actually has warmed up quite a bit from this morning. Uh, it was like five or two or something like that this morning. And it's quite warmer than it used to be. So as much as I prefer to do this outside, it's not going to be all that effective trying to clean this stuff off in that cold of conditions. <laughs> so I'm using the same paint system that I use for the sawmill. So there's a pretty good amount of prep that used to go into this, which is totally fine. I think that most good paint jobs require good prep anyway. So for this first step, I've mixed up some degreaser and a sprayer, and I'll spray the degreaser on, let it sit for a while. I have a few scrub brushes I can use to help agitate the surface and remove all of that surface grime and oil and grease and dirt that's on there. Then everything will get rinsed off. Then I'll go through and add the etch. The etch just sits on for about 20 minutes, and all I have to do is just keep the surface wet during that time, and that can be washed off as well. And then after that last rinse, I'll take these things back out to the shop and I'll use the air compressor to help to dry off any of the surface moisture. And I'll let them sit for, you know, a few hours or overnight, depending on when I finish this. And then we can start painting them. So all the parts are washed and prepped and dried and ready for paint, which is super exciting to be finally at this last step. So I'm going to get some paint into a cup and get to painting. <laughs> this is gonna take two coats, so I'll let this first coat dry and then I'll apply the second final coat. So I should be set for a little while on these things. At this point, I'm just happy to have some spares laying around. I have pretty much as many stacks as I can have in the back behind the shed right now. So I won't be really putting any more of these into use back there. But what's gonna be really nice about having some extras is that when I move things from the back into the basement to finish drying, I can set up a base in the basement first, take all the slabs off of that stack, and then the ones that are out there that were underneath that log, will become the spares for later. And the other thing in the back of my mind too is that a lot of times I tend to stack things in the driveway just to like temporarily until I have time or space to permanently stack them somewhere. So having a bunch of extra levelers will allow me to set up an actual base in the driveway that's actually flat and the logs can technically stay there as long as they need to. Right now it's kind of a rush to get them actually stacked because as they're sitting up there they're just sitting on a pallet or some concrete block and they could deform just sitting up there. But by having a nice flat foundation underneath them, they will actually start their drying process in a nice flat environment. And in reality, if I really wanted to, I could leave them in the driveway uh, until they're totally dry anyway. This is one of those projects where it kind of solves a pain point for me and it gets me out of here making some cool stuff and being able to work with a different, a different medium than wood all the time. So thanks again to Lincoln Electric for sponsoring this video. If you want to check out the 210MP, I'll leave you a link to that down in the description. There'll also be links to a bunch of the other stuff that I use in this video if you're interested in any of that stuff. So thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions on the levelers, anything here in my shop or anything out in the sawmill, please feel free to leave me a comment. I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. 
until next time, <laughs> happy woodworking.